All right. Satellite. It is 6.11 in the morning. <laughs> go satellite connection, go. John, got this. John, what were we doing today? Uh, we're we're going to ride that way and then I forgot to load the direction, so I don't know where we're going. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. All right, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a race recap of the Hardco or Hardcore 100. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Hardco 100 is a 100 mile, at least the main event, is a 100 mile mountain bike race held here at Henry Coast State Park in Northern California. Beyond the 100 mile option, there's also a 100 kilometer option, the metric 100, which is what me and my friend did. And it was really just an incredible day on the bike. We had a lot of fun, it was incredibly hard, and I wanna just talk you guys through sort of the course, what the day was like, and how it all went. So let's go ahead and get into it. The Hardco, like I said, 62 miles, 100 kilometers, and it's about 13,000 feet of elevation gain over the course of those 62 miles. There's something known as the, uh, the co-factor, which is what people who ride here often call it, which is essentially just this idea that a mile at Henry Co is like a mile and a half, two miles anywhere else. Um, and for those of you who have ridden here, you'll know that it is slow going. All the climbs are steep. The descents are narrow, rutted out, sketchy. You just don't move quickly at this park. But for those who are willing to handle the discomfort of the park, you are met with just some ridiculous views, beautiful backcountry remoteness. It is just an incredible place to ride, incredible place to be. So we started off the ride with this long climb known as the Lyman Wilson climb, which is about three-ish miles of like 11%. So it was quite the warm up. Uh, and for the most part, we rode most of it. Uh, we did take a few sections where we just walked because it was so steep that we were essentially doing our FTP just to stay upright. But that was sort of our warm up into the ride. And then we re regrouped here at the top. But before we move on, let's talk a little bit about the bike I use. This is my 2019 Santa Cruz Highball C. Uh, I'm currently trying to get it down to sub 20 pounds. It's currently sitting at about 21 and a half. Fox 32 step cast on the front, SRAM GX Eagle, 12 speed um, drivetrain. And we had a rigid seat post, which was definitely not the move. And it's obviously a hardtail, which was also not ideal for certain bumpy sections of the ride. Although for the most part, it was, it, it just, perform flawlessly. Although I think if I were to do this race again, I would definitely opt for a full suspension bike and definitely one with a dropper post. So anyways, we continued along the Lyman Wilson climb connected to Steer Ridge, which is this sort of main fire road here at the top. And it was cold here. I'm talking 36, 37 degrees. And I was really just feeling pretty miserable. My feet were starting to get really cold and wet after having to cross all those creeks. I couldn't really feel my feet for most of this first section, and my optimism was was rather low at this point, I would say. This was sort of yep. when I was starting to look at the entirety of the ride and being like, oh man, this is gonna be rough. My Garmin also, for some reason, switched over. So I have the Climb Pro, where it tells you how long the climb is that you're on. And usually it's like, you know, gradient remaining, current gradient, uh, ascent remaining for the specific climb, right? And somehow, I don't know what I did, but I switched it during the ride and it turned into gradient, or sorry, climb remaining, total elevation remaining for the entire ride. So I was going up this first climb and it was like, you have 13,000 feet to go. And I was just like, dude, come on. I don't want to see that right now. So that was a little disheartening to start. But once we went down this next little single track descent, this is called the Spike Jones Trail. I think the spirit started to come up a little bit I was like, okay, we got the first climb done. That was the longest climb of the day, actually. The first one, the longest continuous climb. And, you know, the single track descent here was fun. It was flowy. We were having a good time. And I was starting to feel a little bit more optimistic at this point. We then reconnected to the main fire road for just a quick moment before joining the Anza Trail, uh, which was definitely a little, it was a little mucky. And so, again, the going was slow here. There's a couple switchbacks that are just like, 180s like 270s almost you're like turning on yourself and they're ridiculously steep so we had to walk a few sections there were a couple sections of sort of technical climbing that we were just both sort of like well we could attempt it but let's play it safe just walk it and uh you know conserve some energy and that was sort of the name of the game for most of the ride was just trying to be smart right using energy when necessary but also conserving it when possible because we knew we had 
a lot of climbing left for the whole ride. And so we decided to just try to be a little bit smarter when we could. John, how are we doing? Mm, clean, food, calories. Beautiful out here, though. So far, so good. Yeah. Everyone stay on their bike so far. <sighs> Barely. I only got lost one time, so it's good. Biggest gripe. They say these are made in Italy. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's your biggest gripe? I got no gripe. Mine is my socks. But yeah. Lucas' feet are cold, everyone. My feet are cold. We've been hearing about this stuff. <laughs> <Not stopped. laughs> How is it doing? Still cold. So yeah, I was definitely being a little bit of a baby with my cold feet, but in my defense, they were really, really cold. They just felt like frozen blocks of ice. And, you know, especially when descending, it's, it's kind of unnerving to just not know where your feet are because they're so cold. But anyways, we eventually reconnected to Coit Road, this kind of long fire road climb. And the fire roads are really sort of our saving grace in terms of making progress on the course because we were able to actually cover some miles, you know, knock out some feet of elevation and definitely helped us out. So then we turned off of Coit Road onto Mahoney Meadows Trail, which was just this really beautiful double track here. Again, you can see here, it was just really gloomy and foggy at this point. Uh, and I was hoping that at yeah, some point there would be some sunshine. Uh, and that was just not the case, uh, at least not for now. And so we just kind of continued through the fog. And then we started working our way down towards China Hole, which is this sort of like swimming little hole, I guess, in the middle of a river. It's really cool at the bottom of a canyon. I had never done this specific trail that we're on right now. And it was, it was fun. It was definitely overgrown. As you can see, a lot of the trails at Henry Co are currently really overgrown just because of the crazy rain we've had over the winter. So everything is just, you know, really, really uh, dense in terms of the foliage. And it's also pretty narrow. Uh, a lot of these trails aren't, you know, they weren't made as mountain bike trails. Luckily, they allow mountain bikes on basically every single trail at the park, but they're primarily hiking trails or equestrian trails to a degree. Um, and a lot of them were really just cattle trails that then just became hiking and biking trails later on. So, you know, the turns are all pretty flat. They're all pretty narrow. Uh, everything's really steep. And so that definitely does play a factor into sort of the, uh, you know, your ability to descend them. I definitely didn't feel super confident in this one just because I was riding it blind. I'd never gone down it before. Fog was dense, feet were cold, you know, all the excuses I could think of. Um, but kind of worked my way down there. John, my friend, was a little faster than I was, so he waited for me at the bottom, which was sort of the name of the game for us. But eventually we made it down to the creek, took a little breather, played around in the water, and then continued along our path. It's really pretty. There you go. You made it. One shot. You'll edit that, right? Yeah, I'll edit that out. Now, I really thought that things were going to improve heat-wise, and I thought I saw some sun. The sun is finally starting to peek out. Thank all that is holy. Might actually warm up a little bit. Oh, boy, yes. That is a big morale boost although the sun went away but i think it's likely to come out again but as it turned out i was very 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 wrong and we actually never really saw the sun throughout most of the day there were a few times later on in the day when the sun did come out but my feet remained very cold and very wet 
So we continued along our way to the co-headquarters, which was sort of the end of the first leg of the ride. Once we got to the co-headquarters, we were about, I want to say, a third of the way done mileage-wise. Um, but this is actually where I started to feel a little bit more optimistic. So we had this whole kind of fire road climb. We were getting some elevation out of the way, getting some mileage out of the way. And I was looking at my Garmin, which was showing me the total elevation remaining. And I was thinking to myself, dude, we have less than half the total elevation left, right? And so in my mind, the rest of the ride was going to be easier than what we had just done. And we were both actually feeling pretty strong at this point, right? So we, we made it to the co-headquarters over here. We took a quick breather. There's a little gift shop there. And I really, really thought about buying some dry socks there and, and wearing those. But in the end, I'm glad I didn't because they would have just gotten wet right away. But regardless, we just caught our breath for a few minutes and then continued along our way. And for me, I was feeling super optimistic at this point. I was kind of nearing the peak optimism level of the whole ride, um, just because, you know, I was thinking to myself, logically, dude, we got this. It was, at this point, it was like 11 a.m. We've been riding for four-ish hours, I want to say, total ride. No, it was a little before 11, it was like 10.30. We've been riding for about three and a half, four hours. You're not making it. Uh -huh. And so I was feeling pretty good. And I was like, dude, we're, you know, we're more than halfway done. I was thinking, hey, we're gonna be done by like 3 p.m. You know, we're going to go home, we're going to get some lunch, we're going to you know, have the rest of the day to hang out. Like, I was feeling pretty optimistic. We then reconnected onto this trail here called Flat Frog, which again is, you know, typical kind of co-single track, narrow, not really steep, actually pretty, pretty flowy and uh, kind of, um, you know, rolling as far as co-trails go, but just really narrow, right? And so the going was kind of slow for me just because my, my skills are really not as... Uh, as advanced as I'd like them to be. But we made it through. We were averaging about 10, 11 miles an hour on that point, which for us was actually making up time since we were averaging about six and a half for the whole ride. A little bit more fire road climbing. And then we finally got on to the middle ridge descent, which is one of my favorite descents in the park. Initially, I was kind of scared by it the first couple times I did it. But as I've done it more and more times and gotten more kind of used to it and uh, it's become more familiar to me, I really started to enjoy this descent. So we kind of bombed down this descent and at this point, my optimism was nearing its ultimate peak. So we eventually made it to the bottom of Middle Ridge and crossed over the creek here. I did end up getting my feet wet again, but actually this is what solved my cold feet uh, dilemma because the water at the creek was now actually warmer than my feet wore. So it kind of warmed me up actually in, in a sort of somewhat ironic way. And so at this point I was feeling pretty good. Feet were feeling all right. We were m way more than halfway done with the total climbing. And we just had this sort of short punchy mile climb after the Middle Ridge descent. And then we regrouped uh, right before this trail known as the Narrows Trail. Now, I'd never done the Narrows Trail. We were now entering sort of, I guess, the unknown leg of the ride for both of us because we'd never ridden these next few trails. So we didn't really know what was ahead of us. Now, like I said, for me, this was peak optimism. But as we'll find out very shortly, that would be short-lived. I stopped and had, huh? I walked the bike a lot. Stopped and had a granola bar. Took a nap. <sighs> oh. 
So we started working our way down to this trail, like I said, known as the Narrows, and we were just greeted with this beautiful, just stupendous descent down onto the creek bed. As you can see here, just going down this valley, beautiful trail. You could barely see it because it was so overgrown, but it was just perfect. I mean, this, this view was incredible. And again, I was just feeling so confident at this point. I was feeling like we were riding really well. I was descending well, you know, for my standards. And according to the Garmin, the next section was flat. And so in my mind, I'm like, dude, we got this, right? Flat, three miles, three, almost four miles of flat riding. I was thinking we're just gonna be powering down these next three miles, you know, averaging, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 miles an hour, just making up a bunch of time and we'd be well on our way towards uh, towards the end of the ride. But again, I was very, very wrong. As you can see here, we crossed the creek a few times and I didn't want to bore you with a bunch of creek crossings, but I'm not exaggerating. We probably crossed the creek 20 plus times over these next four miles. Like it was just constant. Cross the creek, cross the creek, cross the creek. And nope. some of them we could ride, but a lot of them were just super rocky like this. You know, you couldn't really see the water. Some of them were actually pretty deep. And so you couldn't physically make it through. And we were just moving so slow. And this is when my optimism started to, to dip back towards pessimism. I wasn't fully pessimistic yet, but I was getting really frustrated at this point just because we weren't making progress. It took us like 40 minutes to do these four miles just because we were constantly getting off the bike, getting back on the bike, unclipping, getting back on. And it was just, yep. this part was frustrating. Jeez, that is like for sure. Away. So. We did eventually make it through the creek section, despite the fact that we were moving really, really slow. In certain sections, the trail just sort of disappeared. So we were just like walking through the creek, right? And then there were sections like this where you're just like having to lift your bike over these big boulders. And yeah, it was not super fun at this section. But in my mind, I was like, all right, it's only four miles. It will eventually end. And then the rest of it should be smooth sailing. Well, the rest of it was unfortunately Bear Mountain, as you can see here. The GoPro usually does make things look less steep than they are, but I think How this oh pretty God. accurately captures the level of steepness here. It must have been 40%. I, I'm not joking. It must have been 40% for the first half mile. Even pushing the bike up this hill was incredibly hard, and we were just moving so slow. Uh, thankfully, after the first really, really steep section, it did even out a little bit. And by even out, I meant like it got to like 14% average. I mean, this mountain was a mountain. It was just incredibly, incredibly steep. Uh, we did eventually get sort of halfway up and then the, the last sort of two miles of the four mile climb were a little bit more rolling. Again, really, really steep, but if you could ride to the top of the steep parts and we could ride certain parts, we couldn't ride certain parts, then you had some little downhill sections. And if I was able to carry my speed, then you could use the momentum to sort of get up the next little hump. So that did start to conserve a little bit of energy. Uh, but yeah, there are just some sections that were just brutally steep. And, you know, we would have to put down four or 500 watts just to stay upright, you know? And so it kind of became this game of like, is it better to walk or is it better to ride? Obviously riding was faster, but you were using so much power just to just to move, you know? So Bear Mountain, like I said, four miles. And again, this was like a 45 minute climb for us just to get up to the top. And it was really, really rather brutal. But once we reached the top, my optimism was starting to creep back in because we now had about 3000 feet of climbing left, which yeah, it's a lot, but you know, compared to 13,000, you know, we were, we were kind of nearing the end there. Uh, and so we now had this sort of rolling section just along this ridge on the back. And we were just greeted with this incredible view on both sides. Um, just, you know, gloomy, but just incredible. You could see as far as I could see, just complete remote wilderness, beautiful, beautiful, uh, wild country. Yeah, we and eventually oh, we, we made a little mishap here with the maps, but we only overshot it by about 200 feet, turned around and then did this loop of Mississippi Lake. And this loop was again, sort of frustrating in the sense that it was flat, but the going was just so slow, right? Everything was overgrown, it was bumpy, you had to cross the creek a few times. So again, just more slow going at this point, but optimism was starting to creep back in. 
we were at this point about 20-ish miles away from the end. And we were back on some double track, getting some climbing done, getting some elevation out of the way, getting some mileage out of the way. Things were looking pretty good for us. So we regrouped at the top of this climb here, and then the map said, turn right. And I looked right, and I was just like, oh, I really don't want to turn right. Because we could have just stayed on this nice fire road, but instead we went onto this new overgrown trail. But, you know, that was the course. So we climbed, and then we had this really fun descent, actually. So, you know, initially I was kind of feeling a little frustrated, but then we got on this descent, and it was super fun. I mean, you're just, like, riding down the spine of this ridge, blowing through this barely there trail like it was just so much fun and again at this point i was feeling pretty confident and really most of this ride i have to say for me was kind of like a big step forward riding confidence wise i think a lot of it had to do with the fact that i was getting frustrated and you know there's certain sections that normally i'd be kind of scared of and just walk or unclip to be safe but i was like dude i just want to be done with this so i just like plowed through and in the end i ended up sort of surprising myself a little bit by stuff i'm still by no means a really good technical rider but uh, I did ride a few things that I think previously I would have skipped out on. So I was happy about that. And then Garmin said, hey, the next three miles are flat. And I thought, great. And then we crossed a creek. And then we crossed it again. And again, and again. And it was more of this creek crisscrossing that was just Okay, so yeah, frustrating. Tree crossing, tree crossing. At this point, also, our bikes were, like, eating themselves. You know, just all the creek crossings had washed all the lube off our chains, and so they were completely dry. My fork lockout had stopped working because I got mud in it. I was getting frustrated. When you get frustrated, you make mistakes, like how I misjudged this creek and went OTB. Luckily, I didn't hurt myself, but... Yeah, it was just a really frustrating section of the ride um, where I was just getting, getting annoyed, you know, um, with just the trail... And obviously that's that's part of the charm of this this course, you know, like Co is backcountry, it's remote, it's not like mountain bike trails, they're just trails and you have to sort of deal with it. But this is sort of where I was really at my most sort of frustrated. But eventually that trail ended, that was the Pacheco Creek Trail, we You're reconnected to Wagon Road. And from here on out we had a little bit more of fire road climbing and we started to make some more progress. And from here, we just had a little bit more climbing to go until we then connected on to this other section of single track, which was the Thule Pond Trail, which I'd never done before. But this next, uh, this next single track descent was super fun. Uh, it was flowy, overgrown, but you know you could still see what was what was coming. And yeah, I love this next section. This next little descent was just so much fun. And this is where I really started to feel like, okay. We're almost there. We can do this. You know, rally up. Let's just finish this. left in the whole the whole ride let's do this let's go Johnny you got this 
So yeah, we had about a thousand feet of climbing left to go at this point, and we could just taste the finish line. It was, it was within our reach. We knew the last climb was gonna be brutal. The course description basically said, you know, you get one last little twist at the end, right? It's gonna make you reconsider everything, and we knew it was gonna be steep. So we crossed these last few creeks, continued along this fire road, and then eventually just kicked up, right? And it was super steep, but you know, when, when you're close, when you are within reach of that goal you've been setting out for, that's when you just find that last little bit of strength, you know? And this is when things really started to come together. And I was like, dude, we, we did this, you know? And things all just started to really come together at this point. And it was just an incredible day, honestly. Like, I had so much fun. There were days, you know, there were moments, you know, which I was just frustrated, you know, whether it was crossing the creek or getting stuck, you know, having to clip and unclip constantly. But in the end, it was just one of those days, one of those rides that really puts things in perspective for you, right? On, on one hand, it makes you really reconsider what's possible. You know, like in terms of, like, I think day's just riding a bike, but if you can push yourself to just give it all of your physical strength and your mental capacity for 10 hours straight, it's one of those things that you're like, dude, I can do anything, right? Like whenever you're dealing with any sort of difficult situation in your life, it doesn't have to be an athletic thing, but just anything, it's like, is it harder than hard co? <laughs> you know, I know that's kind of dumb, but it's like a lot of the things in life just aren't that hard. You just got to deal with it, right? And kind of like a lot of the climbs today, I was like, yeah, this sucks, but it'll be over this will pass i will at some point crest this hill you know and not to get all philosophical but also you know i was also starting to feel like dude like what do you really need in life what's important right like i just spent a day with one of my best friends just riding bikes you know pushing ourselves to the limit and it was just perfect and yeah obviously you need to be able to afford a, a bike and the time to go out and do these things but i don't know like how much more do you really need? You know, you like just spending time with people you care about, doing things you enjoy, like, isn't that what really matters, you know? And this whole ride just really made me think about what matters in my life, you know? That at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you always have this. You know, nature is always there for you. You can always find a little bit of time to get out there and just shut your brain off and just, and just exist, you know, and, and do something that makes you happy for no motivation, for no reason other than to enjoy it, you know? And this was just a perfect day. It was just an absolutely perfect day. That was so steep. For a while, I was thinking about just sitting down, laying down on the trail. Yeah. Keeping up. That last climb was brutal too. I was feeling guilty about having taken two days off this week, but I'm not anymore. Elephant time. There we go. One time I did a creek you couldn't do. So as we kind of finished up the last few miles of the yeah. day, we actually thankfully got earlier? a little bit of actual flat uh, flat trail. Again, more creeks to cross, but at this point I was actually enjoying them because, you know, we were so close. We we're just sort of giddy almost, you know, and and yeah, the whole thing just sort of came together and it was it was a great day. It was a long day. The whole thing took us, like I said, about ten and a half hours total time, about nine and a half hours of, of riding time. Uh, average about six and a half miles an hour, which you know, sounds slow, but you know, we were we were working pretty hard throughout the throughout the whole day, and like I said, the cofactor cofactor is real. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed riding along with us. I had a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys are local to the area, check out Henry Co. You won't be disappointed. I promise you. If you really want to challenge yourself, try out the hundred the hundred miler, the hundred kilometers. Just go for it. You know, I think in life, time is limited. Just go for it sometimes, you know, do the things that make you happy, challenge yourself because that's what matters. So thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. See you later.
coming. Good. Oh, thanks. Thanks for uh, waiting for me so much. Oh, no, of course. That's thank all you. I thank had you. Yeah, that was just on fumes. <laughs> I knew I got it out. It wasn't yeah. really pretty. <laughs>